in case we didn't put a disclaimer on this, please do not listen to this episode with your children in the car. <laughs> There's nothing to really be embarrassed of, right? Like this is, this is, you don't have kids that are going to watch this a lot of, I don't, maybe I, we might, we might just have to bleep this one out. Like this just goes in the trash. Reel. No, you are not going to throw this oh, episode no. away. I, we're, we're keeping we're going. Keep- Why is it so hard to just say we're going to fucking talk about sex today? Let's talk about sex, sex baby. baby. <laughs> Let's talk about you and me. Let's, Let's talk about all, all the, the good things. things. Yeah. yeah. All the good things. All and the good the bad things. things. And the and bad the things. Bad things. So, ooh, good versus bad in bed. How is that nine page fetish list going that you've got? You got emailed to you, right? Oh my God, you guys. The craziest thing happened the other day i mean you had to show it to me for me to believe this actually she was like there's no way that this actually happened so i met this guy we had been maybe on like one date and then we were on the phone and he's like are you into impact play it's just like out of was he like do you want to go have sushi or italian and by the way what a fuck (laughs) are you into impact play what the fuck whoa and it came a little bit out of nowhere. So I was being sassy and I was like, well, um, you sound so official about that. Can you send me an email? And he That's said, cute. in fact, I can. I can send you a checklist. And I was stunned for a moment. I mean, I've done some crazy dating over the last decade. I mean, I've dated in New York and LA and tell me about crazier sex lives than here. Maybe like China. I don't know what kind of weird stuff they're into. But um, I believe those places are crazy so he sends me a 10 page fetish checklist Uh, i'm just like i mean i botox i do all that shit but my eyebrows just got so fucking high when you told me that i'm like well there goes the botox i'm gonna need a re-inject who does that one date fetish checklist i mean i think people tend to feel more open Mm -hmm. with me than likely they do with other people i'd like to think that maybe i have that impact on people guys up that that they go deep (laughs) fast (laughs) and then recoil and like ah she knows me (laughs) she knows me so but i actually can kind of respect him right like because i feel like it's so often that we hide our sexual preferences from a partner well, I think we need to clarify what this actually was. This wasn't his sexual preferences. It was a checklist for you to fill out. Yeah, it was a checklist it's for me like to fill out. It's not like his filled out one so you knew what this well, joker was up to. It was, yeah, he wants to know what you like. It was really funny because I could kind of tell that kind of kind of tell i can tell that this is like a dom sub kind of situation okay for those of us that are not familiar with dom and sub please take a look at zolata's outfit she is now showing you what a dom would be wearing (laughs) but i really think you should explain i don't know if anybody everybody i'm pretty sure everybody knows everybody knows everybody knows you do it like a g-rated dominatrix the only g i want rated is between my legs a g you want, a g you want rated okay in case we didn't put a disclaimer on this please do not listen to this episode with your children in the car or do Ooh, it depends on okay let's just not. so and he was like okay i want you to fill this out and send it to me and i was I like want you to fill this out okay i'm sorry well, I, I'm, I I'm gonna be was quiet. quite as dominating I'm just, I'm just gonna be quiet what i did I was like, oh, okay, we're that kind of place. So I like changed my demeanor, take a breath. And I'm like, I want you to fill yours out and send it to me. There was a long pause on the other side of the line because I don't think he expected for me to just change my tone like that because it was really sweet and really playful. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, you're you doing do this for me too. Yeah. And so and- has he? He hasn't yet, but I also haven't sent mine either because I've been really busy. Oh, so this relationship is starting out tit for tat. Show me, show me yours and I'll show you mine. Well, I'm willing to explore it. I feel like this could be really fun. Little bitch, send her her copy first. <laughs> Little bitch, send her her copy. <laughs> Why haven't you sent it already? <laughs> we'll remain respectful. <laughs> we'll remain respectful. <laughs> agreed, agreed. But there are some interesting things on this checklist, right? Yes, like I, I was very intrigued. Like that, there was some definite thought put into that. So, I mean, first of all, it starts off with three types of anal play. 
<laughs> right? Like anal play. Why? Wait a minute. But does that make you wonder, like, why was anal play first? Why was that the first thing on his list he was curious about? With because you? whoever put this checklist together. Oh, this is by in alphabetical order. Oh, it is. It is. Okay. Anal so play. Anal play would come first. Not that we're anal or anything here. <laughs> Just... <laughs> God, get your shit straight. B uh, you beating. <laughs> well, you know, I when I got to bestiality, I was like, I'm gonna have to mark. I'm gonna have to like mark X on this one. Like, what does X mean? X You've means done this? X. So okay, and there's a rating system for this thing. Okay. So, and I'm not gonna give away the rating system because if you have actually received this checklist, I don't want you to like, you oh know, my to feel God. the same way. So, you, so oh, that would oh, be a you don't hard want him to limit. Copy you. Is that what you're saying? You don't. If he listens to this podcast, you don't want him to copy your answers so that y'all match. Oh yeah. So there's a hard limit, and bestiality is a hard limit for me. That. But can we just remove that off the list? Like the animals can't decide if they want to have sex with you. What? Don't we have a hashtag? Yeah, I think this? it's like I think just this say, needs what is to the be... hashtag? Like, come on, animals don't get it right. Like we don't put them on the goddamn oh, it's list. Just bad. This is oh. just bad. But okay. So and then there's stuff like. But how does that make you feel about the dude that sent you that? It seems like it was a pre-made checklist, so I didn't. I don't you think question. he found this on Google. Google. I, what do you send to girls in LA that you've got on one date, date with material? To shock the shit out of them, so then we can do anal. <laughs> oh my god! Oh no! The weirdest thing that's ever happened to me on a date. At the end of my first date, it was like a lovely first date. This was in New York City, and okay. people in New York City, like especially men who are into finance, they're into freaky shit. So they fuck different in New York, is what? Oh, they fuck mean. way different in New York. So like. Different than Texas. Have you, have you, like, um, I got, I got one in, I got one in that you zip code. You got a boo there? I got a boo in that zip code. How was that rodeo cowboy? Oh, he was so, hmm. like, they're just so respectful. Ma'am. It's a I southern hospitality. <laughs> he was hospitable. Let me tell you that. He was hospital. Oh, yeah. But he that's went to for, town. <laughs> that, he took me to town. Oh, oh my God. This is wrong. This, <laughs> this is great. Like... We're going to keep going. So, that first date in New York City, he at the end of the date he takes me to a really nice restaurant he walks me home and then he takes a full-on mask like dom mask he puts it on he goes who is your daddy and i was like wait not a minute you. on the street not you not you you are not my daddy it was on the street on the street out of nowhere he goes who is your daddy he put a mask on on the street yeah on the street the before COVID. This was before COVID. Okay, because I was like, everybody's wearing fucking masks and who's your daddy's a pretty common line. Oh, no, honey. We're talking about a latex black <gasps> mask. Were you dressed like this? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just have to. I can't help. My, did you snort? Did you snort? <laughs> One mark for Alicia, please. Everybody acknowledge that I made her snort. <laughs> I didn't say squirt. I said snort. That would be... <laughs> we're not going down that rabbit hole. Oh, we are. We're talking about sex. So <laughs> that was the weirdest fetish date thing that's ever happened. So a checklist on a second date, I was like, well, at least he so asked. Bad. When Halloween comes, I'm going to do that shit to Charles. We're going to go on a nice date. And when we get home, his sweet little wife is just going to pull down this mask. Who's your daddy? <laughs> We'll see if I'm still married after October to make it to anniversary number seven. <laughs> Who's your daddy? We do not recommend to try this at home. I do fucking recommend it. Please put in the comments how it goes. <laughs> what? Okay. Comment section. What is the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you on a date? What's the weirdest checklist you've ever been emailed? <laughs> That did not come from your doctor. Mm. Okay, let's hear. One. My doctor has never been this detailed about my pussy or my sexual preference. No, they really just don't care. They really They're just like you're don't gonna care. die. None of us are getting out of this. Oh, she was just like she was not. Okay, so okay, if we're gonna go in alphabetical order, yes, uh, I think that's important that we stay anal first. So and then there's biting, hmm. uh, hard leaving marks, and then there's a second type of biting of biting breaking the skin. Ooh, okay. I'm not into that. I I don't care how good you are in bed. You don't get to leave marks on me. Like permanent 
blood drawn, I might have a scar mark that I have to use Mederma on. <laughs> like, nah, man, I have enough things to worry about. <laughs> yeah, heart stop for me. There was there was a couple things on here that I was like, oh, I'm proficient. I'm putting, <laughs> putting the highest ranking Check. on this situation. Uh, some things I was not okay with were like mm, cross-dressing. So like you, if my guy showed up looking like a woman, I don't know if I could still be attracted to him. I would just pull down my mask and say, who's your daddy? <laughs> <laughs> Charles, please do not put your feet in my shoes. That's a hard no. <laughs> like I'm going to have to disinfect. Even I, even I can't put my feet in as her As much shoes. as I love Zolata and her foot is the same size. If I come home and your ass is in one of my dresses and my heels, we're done. Because you've stretched them out, not because you cross-dressed. Because you stretched them out. <laughs> yeah, I would be like, get your own stuff, man. I think my, that's my cross-dressing problem. Like, don't you know, try to... Don't try on your stuff? No. <laughs> no, you can try. Oh my God, Zolata. Have you ever had a guy smell your underwear and then ask if he could take it with him mm. that creepy ass shit actually happened to me once i don't think it's creepy i think it's kind of sexy S if he's like oh i want to i want to carry what you dogs do everywhere the dogs grab me. your dirty underwear and like munch on it or money making shit. models on only fans who are smart i never had a model grab my underwear I, I mean, I'm sure oh, you mean they're mailing it yeah, out. Yeah, I'm sure they're mailing it out. If you would like oh for me God. to mail you my panties, <laughs> holla at your girl. I would do it. I just had the. I live in LA. Do you know how expensive rent is on Abikini? No, I, I will mail my panties but to you. Let's see. I just had the best idea for a business plan. Set up a thing with all of the universities where every Friday you'll pick up all of their dirty underwear and you'll give them just all brand new so they don't have to do laundry. And then you've got your thing. Just mail out dirty underwear. <laughs> Uh, it, it would be picked up in a yeah. panty van. Yeah, a panty van. It would be pink with like Pan black cursive. Drop yeah, your panties, would... ladies. <laughs> Are you having, having a good time We're selling this shit? <laughs> I'm sorry. I can turn anything into a business. <laughs> I'm just saying that's disgusting. I had a guy do it to me, and I was just like, you didn't like that. So it's disgusting for you because yes. that's not your sexual. Because preference. I didn't understand why he would want something that I had sweated in all day. I was like, wait, that's. So gross to me. Really? I think I'd be into it. He Would can you? have it. I mean, I get the logic behind that's hot because like, oh, you like me so much. You want to take my scent with you, I guess. Yeah. But all I keep on seeing in my head is that Jeepers Creepers van from, you know, that movie. Have you seen Jeepers Creepers? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, you want my scent. The next thing you're going to do is want my skin and you're going to try to build some bodysuit out of me. <laughs> Okay, she like, is. It's really where it went. She very is really quickly. <laughs> strange OCD about her stuff. So I, know, I, I was like, see well, how why you... do you want to take my smell with you? What are you going to do with it? What, what's going to happen? <laughs> I want you to think about me. Any chance you get. Can I send you a picture? <laughs> like just a picture? This is what I love about sex and sex life and sexual so preferences. Yeah. Is that what's disgusting to you is like sexy to me. I don't think disgusting is the right word. I think I was so confused. Mm. Like so confused. And then I just imagined my dog, like, you know, when you're a teenager and you got a dog at the house and they're always tearing at eat your, your crotch. Yeah, yeah, your underwear. Not eat your crotch, crotch, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah we know what you meant. <laughs> no bestiality. No, we already said no bestiality. No dog was ever harmed in my life in recording of a podcast. I've been at a ever. dog. <laughs> it's so strange. Wow. Oh, my God. Now we're going to have to go down this, uh, this, like, crazy, crazy shit. So my husband's mother is a nurse practitioner and she worked in the ER for years. Have you ever heard of people that put mice up their ass? I'm sure I'm going to check my checklist. To see if that's on there. <laughs> I think that would be ass in bestiality and I would have to specify. Yeah. But then that's, they find, that's a hard no. Then they find dead ones up there. <gasps> they have to be excavated. Is this a common thing? <gasps> More common than you would like. She had multiple stories of this. She was like, oh, you would be. Yeah, she was like, you would be shocked at what people will put inside their bodies that I have to pull out. Shocking. Shocking. I thought this was going to start off as an educational podcast about sexual preferences. <laughs> and here sorry. we are with mice up the ass. I, I'm just telling you, like, there's crazy shit going on. So nothing I put on this checklist is going to be weird. No, not really. I think you're pretty normal, even though you have like a 70 page how to manual. I still think you're normal. Uh, you can't tell people about this. I can't tell. This is a sex show.
She just told you guys about my pussy book. I said a 70 page manual. I didn't say what it was about. I am busted. <laughs> I I tell her in confidence over girlfriend cocktail Did moment. Did I say a pussy book? I didn't hear me say pussy book. I said your manual, woman. Fine. I made a manual. You I got tired. I got tired of, of the bad wrong sex. buttons being pushed. Like they just weren't even in the proximity of the buttons. What were they pushing on? Oh, things and stuff. <laughs> they couldn't even find the the clitoral area. And I'm like, you are I'm like, how are you an Ivy League success Ivy League grad, successful entrepreneur, you have all these accolades and accomplishments and you can't find my clit. I'm gonna make you a manual for this shit. And so and so I sat down one day with some wine and I made a manual. Like, how does a lot of work? I love it. So the pussy book was born. I love it. I actually believe that every woman should have a pussy book, every especially woman. if she's dating. Yeah, because then you could just like, hey, look, fucker, don't send me your stupid che checklist. I'm not doing it. Read my book first, then we'll talk. Because <laughs> if you can please me, then we'll talk about me answering all your questions. <laughs> That's interesting. That's a way to do it. Yeah. I feel like you started off slowly with a checklist. I still don't know. Let's just cover more of this checklist so I can see if I can get into it. Because so far, like, it's just not hitting it. It's not hitting the spot. Which spot do you want to hit? A good one. Okay. So I have a question for you. Um, how do you feel about bondage? Mm -hmm. There's a couple different types. We have bondage light. Okay. What's what is bondage light? Bondage light is when you have some movement. Oh. <laughs> It's like trying to get up, get out of the straight. Well, this movement her, her. I would tie up. I would tie okay, up with no way of getting out. And like with an electrical cord around the chair. Yeah. <laughs> so there is an electrical cord section in here. Get out. Shut it up. is let called. Me it. it is called. I don't believe it. Let me take care of this myself. <laughs> electrical cords. There are elect. There is a. There is a whole thing on the electrical cords and the sharp knives and the. Titty fucking. Okay, well, titty fuck, that's normal. So, okay, they do have these electrical wands that, that you can get shocked with that, okay. like, are kind of playful, actually. I need to go back to the titty fucking. Do girls with fake boobs want to be titty fucked? Uh, it depends on the situation, Does it right? depend on if you have gummy implants or saline? Because mm. I know if I had saline implants and a guy was trying to do that, I'd be like, be gentle. I'm not trying to lose a boob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> like, oh my God, our boobs were so pretty. And then after we were done, one was like missing. <laughs> I fucked it out of her. <laughs> Literally. I mean, I'm just curious. <laughs> I, I've got fake boobs. I love them. They're gummy. So they're it's definitely. Four, four, four. The angels are with us. <laughs> I'm sorry, God. Uh, so a lot of made me do it in her bondage outfit. <laughs> Who is your daddy? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dad and Uncle, if you ever listen to this. Oh, God. If they ever... I'm in trouble. You've been a bad girl. <laughs> the look of terror that just <laughs> went across my face because I forgot we're actually publishing this. Yes, this episode is being published. Okay. Can I say my sorries at the end? Like, roll credits? No, I think we should keep going because... I'm sorry to my son and my daughter. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> I love... Do you, do you see her squirming? I like so beet red <laughs> or I feel hot. This is very cute. Mm. Okay. So, hey, y'all had to be conceived somehow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, in Russia, nobody had sex. Never. Never. Oh my God. <laughs> so we had this employee once, sweet as can be, literally. Charles, it's the, always the sweet ones that are just freaky. He, no, no, he was not freaky. He was so sweet, though. And him and Charles had been on a business trip, right? So they had, I forget where they were taking, some truck. They had to drive. It was like 10 hours. So they were in the car for a minute. The guy asks Charles if you, like, you can get a girl pregnant by her giving you head. And he was so serious. He was like, that's why you're supposed to pull out. This is a real thing. He believed it at like 30. Well, people are really sheltered. We have no sex education at all. Oh my God. I couldn't, at first I thought Charles was pulling my leg. I'm like, shut up. That's not even funny. Don't tell me that shit. And he was like, no, he was serious. 
And I was like, did you burst his bubble? And he was like, yeah, dude, you can come in her mouth all you want. <laughs> She's not going to get pregnant. <laughs> was he happy about that? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why'd you tell him that? <laughs> his girlfriend's not going to be appreciative. It's probably but... his girlfriend who told him that. <laughs> I don't want to get it's pregnant. It's probably his girlfriend. She's like, oh, can't no do, honey. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> in 10 years, doesn't work. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. Literally, if I'm really cranky, I do tell Charles, I'm like, I need my vitamin D, damn it. And he knows what that means. <laughs> Get to work, buddy. So this is a real thing. Sex. Sex. Mm. Or vitamin D. Oh, vitamin D. Yeah. If I'm cranky, I just need to get laid. At a lot of the times where I'm like, like, I've done my self-care routine, right? I've done my I've self-care. I've read too many books. I've meditated too I've read long. the books. I've meditated. I've done all this stuff. And then I'm like, why am I still not myself? And I'm like, oh. I just need a good fucking. I just really need to get laid. Yeah. Like when you're meditating and you feel your vagina clenching. It's like, wait, that's not supposed to happen in meditation. <laughs> then you know. <laughs> then you know. Get laid. <laughs> Give up on this. <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> i won't admit how many times that happens i'm very good at meditating <laughs> that's meditating is what we call it now <laughs> yeah. it's a different form <laughs> different little <laughs> i have never seen her like this i'm so enjoying this right now. no we're done oh god <laughs> Stay the eggplant <laughs> i regret it Okay. Alicia's got the laughies. I, I really love it. Do. Like, I love it. I'm so embarrassed at this point. Might as well just continue. So, but there's nothing to really be embarrassed of, right? Like this is this is you don't have kids that are gonna watch this a lot of. I don't. Maybe I we might we might just have to bleep this one out. Like this just goes in the trash reel. No, you are not gonna throw this oh, episode no. away. I, we're we're keeping we're going. Keep, okay. okay, I want to ask you about the worst date you've ever been on that resulted in sex. Like terrible date, great sex. Oh. Has it ever happened to you? <laughs> or like, have you ever had it that a guy like totally surprised you in bed? Where he was like totally like this quiet guy, kind of not like a big deal or a big thing. And then like you got in a bedroom with him and you're like, God damn. Yeah, that's what I married. <laughs> oh, tell me about that. Yeah, that's what I married. But I have had guys where you would, you, you know, you're summing him up and you're like, he'll, he should be good in bed. He's got like all the appropriate things that I'm seeing that I need. And then... You have sex with them and you're like, what the, get the fuck out of my bed. And now I have to wash my sheets. Not because I had a good time, but because you're sweaty. Oh, oh like, sweaty guys are the worst. Go. That is the least sexy thing ever. If a guy's like going to town and then droplets of sweat. I have had. Start a, dropping on you like rain. I've had a droplet in of your sweat mouth. dropped into my mouth. And I was like. <laughs> Sorry for that sound. <laughs> not on the checklist That's disgusting it was the worst so anyway so tell I mean, me about sweat but okay tell me about this quiet guy that you met who ended up being a freaky freak oh god charles closet freak he looks so like put to put together always in his suit always got his you know serious demeanor going on and then you put him in a bedroom and it's like what the fuck is going on i literally <laughs> This story is hilarious because when I met Charles, I had just gotten divorced like six months prior. And I met my first husband when I was 16, married when I was 18, had my first kid at 22, second at 24. It was just like white picket fence horror story. Um, only man I'd ever slept with. So virgin when I got married. Looking back, if you have not tried the milk, please try the milk because you would definitely not buy the whole car, <laughs> like whole car whole cow. Um, that being said, if I would have had sex with him, we wouldn't have gotten married. But afterwards... Wait, you got married a virgin? Yeah. That's why I said, try the milk. Don't buy the cow. Like, just try the milk first. <laughs> I learned my lesson, but I... Yeah. So okay, anyway. this is really interesting. Yeah. Was there, like, a, a reason behind that where you're, like, trying to be pure Christian Well, it was Christian. Girl. It wasn't pure. It was basically, if you have sex before you get married, you will die and burn in hell. <laughs> So like, okay, so it was the hell? religious religious yeah, part of that. For okay. sure. So anyway, that being said, once once I, you know, experienced all of that and went through a divorce, I was like, I don't give a shit what happens when I die and go to hell. I'm gonna go <laughs> I, I am in hell. Else is, I am this is hell. hell. This is fine. Exactly. I'm gonna figure out what everybody else has been doing that I've been missing out on. Mm -hmm. And so Was uh, he a virgin? 
Charles? No, oh, your first husband. Uh, you know, that's a good question. I, I, we don't have to back, expose I'm that. like, I'm sure he was. <laughs> so anyway, I, I meet Charles and I had already like sworn off men. I'm never getting married again. Fuck that shit. No one owns me. Nah, nah. You know, I hate them. I just like one thing from them and that's all I need. And so when I met Charles, literally he told me he was never getting married again. And I was like, score. This dude is hot. He's quiet. I don't have to hear a bunch of stupid shit coming out of his mouth. And like, great, right? Then, so he comes over to my house for our date. I'm not going to name numbers of how many this was. It was not our first, although if it would have been convenient. Um, so he comes over and this is why I told you this. I had a nanny. So I'm single. I've got two kids under right. three. And when my kids would go to their father's house, then, you know, it would be my time to have some fun. Well, the nanny would usually go to her boyfriend's on the weekend. The nanny was still there. I didn't realize, like, the nanny's still upstairs, right? My jaw just cracked. Yeah. So Charles comes over. He's going to make me dinner. This was prior to Netflix and chill. Meant the same thing. Mm. Uh, so he comes over to make me dinner. We hadn't had sex before. But he was like, okay, I'll make you dinner. Um, you know, what do you want? And I was like, I want you to do it naked. Like, I assumed he would throw some fit. And he was like, fine. Just took off all his clothes. But fucking naked. I was just like, whoa. What what's going the on? Balls here? on that man. Yes. Okay, I don't okay, know. Sorry. I have, I, I'm like, just uh, you gave me like a moment. I'm like, yeah, there. Oh, she checked out <laughs> for a second. She's like, oh yeah, those are good. Just one second. Oh wow. So anyway, I'm like, okay, well, if you're gonna do it naked, then I'm gonna need you to also fulfill this fantasy where you wear my pink apron because I had this frilly little pink apron. He's like, give it to me. I'm like, okay. So he's got on the pink apron. He makes dinner. I don't know what my nanny was doing upstairs, but she was so quiet. He never, he never heard her. So we sit down to our dinner table. He's butt fucking ass naked with a pink robe on and she comes trotting down the stairs. And I have like the cat ate the canary grin on my face. <laughs> Cause I don't think this is going to be anything. Right. And I'm just like, oh, Hey girl. <laughs> and she's like, eyeballs popped out. Charles, I shit you not just turns and he was like, hi, I'm Charles. Nice to meet you. <laughs> With his fucking ass hanging off the chair. And I'm just like, yeah, dude, that one's kinky. Wow. I love this story. First of all, now I'm going to get a free fruit apron. I would like a, a version yeah. of that. It's so cute, dude. So cute. It's even hotter on it, dude. <laughs> Uh-oh, that's the cross-dressing. Is that what we got to? Charles is not cross-dressed. I try to force. <laughs> Obviously. So he would be like, you told people I do. I'm like, no, no. I said I do it. For the reference, he does not cross-dress. <laughs> no, but he does have impeccable taste. Oh, that man that does man's have jackets. Impeccable. And like he gets complimented on his jackets more than I get complimented on my dresses. I'm like, but did you did you see my dress? <laughs> he is really, really well dressed. I remember you sent me a selfie with you and Charles at the <laughs> airport at 730 in the morning and he was in a tailored suit and she was like, huh. Batons. <laughs> and I was like, what are y'all crazy psychos doing at 7 a.m. at the airport looking all cute? So sweet. Just being us. Wow. <laughs> I mean, dream team right there. <laughs> I am going to officially request that any man who cooks me dinner does it naked. Did you guys hear that? If you would please uh, post a comment below if you would like a date with Zolata and I will send you the apron. Ooh. Naked. You have to do it naked. You have to do it naked. And you also have to be able to cook. And, and you also have to be able to read a 74 page manual on that reading comes before the date. They just need to read the manual before the date. So do you think I should send them the manual before the date and then they come I think over? We should for post food? the link to the manual. You know, no. <laughs> that is a no for me. That's a hard no. Okay. That's a hard no. And I like them hard. Your nose. Yeah. You want to know exactly what path we're going. I want a hard yes and I want a hard no. You don't want to, oops, wrong hole. <laughs> Sorry. So actually I'm the type of person I don't. So this checklist, for example, has like, this is an X and this is a 10 and this is a nine and this is a four and this is a maybe. And I'm like, I'm, I'm Russian. You get yes, you get no. Yeah. There's Let's nothing in between. Simple. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, like you don't, I'm pretty adventurous. Most things, I would say I would give it a good two tries. I don't feel like the first try you can ever, especially like, for instance, food. I might not like something the first That's time. That's not what I thought you were going to say. Oh. <laughs> God, do you think I'm that? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I am. I am. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking that. But yeah, I think give everything a good two tries. So I'm pretty easygoing about stuff. But there are some that you're just like, mm, I don't even see, like it doesn't sound fun to try. It sounds painful. 
So there's this interesting thing, like that doesn't sound fun to try. Mm -hmm. So in like dominating submissive kind of roles mm -hmm. with the guy that I really like, I don't like hurting someone. Like mm -hmm. I don't like hurting him. It doesn't give me pleasure. Yeah. But if it's a guy that I'm just playing with, I will smack the fuck out of you. You're like, for the last dude who fucked me over. Oh, I'm yeah. And I'm like, him. this is all my daddy issues. Mm. <laughs> all my daddy issues. Oh, yeah. I, and then if I like a guy, I can't do it. And there's a part of me on the inside that I'm like, oh, I just, it just can't. You know, it's a lot of, do you know why you can't do it? Because you haven't been with him long enough. But give him 10 years. You'll be able to slap him. <laughs> right? <laughs> Run, motherfucker. So there is hope. <laughs> There is hope. Yeah, yeah. Just give it some time. Though I don't think I've ever slapped Charles, but I have definitely thought about it. Oh, yeah. I definitely, I've told him I would. Over our think first you, fight. Do you think you'd be into it? To slapping him? Nah, that's not his thing. I'm sure he's had some girls try it and like, mm. Mm. Nah, Charles, Charles pretty much knows what he likes. <laughs> oh. He's very, very well versed in that. But I have wanted to slap him before. So you'll get there. Yeah. It's hope. So that actually gives me hope. Yeah. And it makes a lot of sense, right? Like if you're with a guy for a couple of years, which I have yeah. a couple of years into it, you're like, oh, I just want to hurt you. <laughs> I want you to be okay. After. I hope everybody feels the same way because now, as I said it out loud, it's probably not how most people feel. But seriously, uh, I, I wouldn't say most people don't feel like that. If you've been in a relationship long enough, I mean, I think with almost anyone, your siblings, your like, oh man, I definitely wanted to hurt my mom at times. <laughs> like, lady, I've had enough. <laughs> it was like duct tape. <laughs> Do you think that's where all the fetishes come from? Oh, your parents? Yeah. Like issues? Yeah. With your parents? So where where do your kinks Ooh. and sexual desires, where do you... Where do they originate at? I will tell you I've had this. It's ridiculous, Zlata. But I have had this... What is that called that you just said? I a fetish. Remember, get, no, not a fetish. Uh, desire. It's like a desire, desire. whatever. Okay. No, you had another word. But it's like an old guy thing. Like right when their hair is like a little bit more salt than pepper. And for some reason, it's always up in like a huge high rise building in an office that's all glass. Mm. What is the deal? Fantasy. With that? Yeah. Fantasy. You got a fantasy. Yeah. And I'm like, but why? Why that? I have. So, a, yeah. What creates those fantasies? I have a mad secretary fantasy. You want like be, when I'm a secretary oh, and like my boss, secretary. yes. And like where my boss is like, we're definitely into a thing and I'm definitely not into it. Yeah. So it's a little life. bit of a force. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I so see. that is my fantasy. Yeah. Okay. But it's interesting because I always put myself in situations and positions where I'm the boss. Yeah. The so opposite of it. The opposite of it. You know, Charles and I had this discussion once about do people crave the opposite in life? And I guess kind of like what you're saying, men that are high powered and just dominating business and crushing it, they want to be dominated. Oh, I've now, smacked some fi he, finance dudes around. Yeah. For, well, I don't know if they were super, uber, I don't know, but like what I'm saying is it's, they're trying to balance, you know, bring some balance to their lives. And I don't even know if that's conscious, but I think that's what's happening. I think they would tell you that it's conscious. Really? I've definitely encountered that in New York a lot more than in LA. LA has, so New York fetishes, at least maybe it was the reflection of my fetishes at the time, my likes, my desires at the time. The energy that you were putting out. The energy I was putting out. It was a lot more like, it was a lot more about control, dominating another person. And it's so indicative of New York, right? Like it's a very tight environment where you're constantly stressed out and there's constantly deadlines. Mm -hmm. And when I moved to LA, the fantasies here are different. I find that for me in LA, it's been a lot more playtime with other people, a lot more uh, polyamory slash open relationships slash multiple people playing together. That seems like more of an LA vibe than a New York vibe. And it may be me or it may be location based. I don't know if that's based on zip code, but that's just my observation. That's very intriguing. But also LA is like a place where you want to taste the rainbow. So doesn't it make sense that you would want to play with multiple different people in this city? I mean, uh, yeah, I could see that, but I could see that in any city. But I think that people are more, they feel freer to do what they're desiring here. 
I think there's just a lot less constructs here than in cities, for instance, like Dallas, or there's such a different vibe in those places. And there's so much control that hasn't lightened to where I don't think people can actually, and they can be who they want to be, but I think they feel scared too. Cause I don't think that there's more people here who want to taste the rainbow than Dallas. Uh, there's like, definitely a lot more people I want to taste in uh, LA oh, hotter than in Dallas. So you Does that make hotter. sense? Like, oh, yeah. Well, you go to a play party and it's like models and actors and TV stars and like all like, of this I saw you stuff. on Calvin Klein. <laughs> and you're like, legitimately, I'm like, he's a Calvin Klein model. Of course I would want to play with this person. Like, Do you need duh. support under the table? <laughs> I'll support you. Better than those briefs did. <laughs> uh oh, Alicia's getting briefed. Oh, God. Anyway, yeah, I could see that. And Dallas is more cowboy. So, how does a, 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 a virgin Mary yeah. <laughs> go to a freaky woman like you now? You meet Charles. <laughs> ah, you he was your gateway drug. Oh, my God, dude. That man rocked my world. I was like, this is what I've been missing out on. What? Okay, I get it now. <laughs> yeah, great sex is... Yeah. It, m m like, your sexual compatibility is so big. And I think a lot of people give up on having great sex when they're in good relationships. Fuck that. No. No. Give up great sex for a good relationship? You, it should be both. But tell me you haven't heard these stories where people are in a really good relationship, but sex is meh. I don't believe it. A really good relationship, but the sex is meh. That sounds like a friendship to me. How many people are having sex with their friend? I mean, I was. That's what Charles was, I guess. I guess it's, I don't know. I All I know. I need to hear the story. It was This was like. Love at first sight, apron on. <laughs> that wasn't our first pants date, off. But it wasn't our first. Date. <laughs> yeah. So when I when we met, I already the second I met him, I thought he was hot. I was just like, dude, yeah, that's great. You'll be good for eye candy, right? Um, there was also instant chemistry, but I think that both of us were he had been screwed over a lot and was just tired of the dating game like i'm tired of dropping two three hundred dollars on dinner with bitches just because that's what they want tonight I'm like I, I need to eat tonight what guy can i call up and i get it i'm like that sucks uh for men to have to date that way it makes sense he was tired of it and then for me i had just gotten out of a marriage where i got burned really bad and so i didn't want any of that but i still wanted companionship and when we clicked that energy thing that you talk about, like that's just there. I just know when I click with someone and I instantaneously knew that I would like to have him in my life forever. I didn't know I wanted to marry him. I was just like this guy, he, there's something about him that I truly enjoy being next to his energy. So there was that. And that's why we became such good friends. And then obviously the sexual attraction was there. So that just naturally happened. <laughs> I, I said naturally in her pink apron. <laughs> So natural. Naturally in a pink <laughs> apron. How long have you been together? Oh, we've been together a little bit over 10 years now. I thought you yeah. said you were never going to get married. I did say I was never going to get married. And he said he was not going to get married. He said he was never going to get married. So what changed? Well, one day he called me on the phone and we were just fucking off in our normal. The only person I have ever enjoyed talking on the phone with is him. I hate talking on the phone. So he, we're just doing he our talks thing. on the phone with me. Only because I love you. Mm -hmm. That's it. I will do it because. For hours. On Zoom. Um, yeah. Zoom is different. Drinking brandy in, yes. her, in her bougie robe. <laughs> yes. That's happened. That has happened. It's the right. best Zoom girls night of all time. Especially if we have the same brandy. Yeah. Yeah. Because like we're enjoying it together. Yeah. Mm. What were we talking about? And why did it happen? How we're talking happen? about you never getting married and Charles calling you. Oh, so he calls me and we're just shooting the shit like normal. Right. And all of a sudden, like the phone gets quiet and he was like, God damn it, Alicia, be serious. I'm trying to figure out if I could marry you someday. Literally, this is what I did. <laughs> and then hung up on him. I didn't no. Talk to him for two weeks. <laughs> yeah. That's how that went down. <laughs> he was like the first and I completely forgot about this conversation right just in one whatever it is what it is we were sitting around the campfire with his parents like last Christmas and he brings out the story yeah everybody knows I'm not real open and I don't really share my feelings it's so, like and then the first girl that I opened up my heart to and shared my feelings with cracked up and hung up on me so you know how often I do that <laughs> and I was like what is he talking about? and he was like looks at me like what do you mean what do you what am I and then it like all started clicking back and I was like oh my god I did do that <laughs> 
<laughs> so if you want to get married, that's what you do to guys. You just fucking pretend like you don't want to. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I wasn't pretending, but that's how it happened. <laughs> so anyway, funny story, I guess. Wow. Yeah. I don't know how things end up the way they do. I guess if you're just meant to be together, you're going to be together. I, I don't know if I believe in like soulmates, but I truly believe that he was my best friend. Mm. Like he, so we met um, late spring and he moved away late fall to start his own business. I already had my cupcake bakeries. He moved away and I knew even, I don't care where he goes, like we're always going to be friends. So we both dated other people. Like, I mean, dated other people. He invited me to come up and visit him and he was like, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to have to call this girl that I'm kind of talking to while you're here. And I was like, fucker, get out of here. <laughs> Buy me a plane ticket when she's gone. Like, I'm going to sit there and listen to you talk to some chick. Uh, no. Like, I know we're good friends, but like, that's a little much. No, that's extra. <laughs> if you like her enough to tell me that, then maybe you should pursue that. Right? Yeah, totally. That's how I felt. Totally. You should totally just yeah, go do your thing. later. He was like, I'm, I'm buying you a ticket. I was just like, okay, okay whatever. Yeah, I'm not sitting there and listening to you talk to another woman. Right. I know we're just friends, but like... The audacity on that man. I know. He has some balls. He has some balls. <laughs> he has some I can't blame him for trying either, though. I'm like, hey, man, if you can get away with it, by all means. But I think that's a that's an amazing thing to pause at is people will allow, like, people will treat you how you allow them to treat you. Not just that. People will allow you, you know, how you let them treat you. But how about I respect him for doing it because he respected me enough to tell me versus to try to sneak off and call her on the side. I'm not saying like, that's a bad thing. Oh yeah, no, I'm just no, saying I'm, that- I'm going as, down a different, sorry. Yeah, I, and I, I think that's a really good point too, yeah. is I respect people for asking certain things. I respect this okay. man for sending me a checklist and be like, what are you into? What are you not into? Because I don't wanna go down this rabbit hole if we don't share the same kind of thing. Or, hey- Sufficient. I'm into polyamory or I'm into open relationships. Are you into that thing? Yeah. And that's when you know yourself well enough yeah. to make these requests. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, people will continue treating you and asking you for things mm -hmm. that they want. And it's up to you to create a boundary. But so many women will take that as, oh, the audacity on that man and how could he and blah, 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 blah. I just more said in a joking way, I'm like, yeah. oh, the audacity. Yeah, it's pretty ballsy. But it's like we kind of hit on this earlier. I just want the truth. And if that's where he felt he needed to be and that's what he wanted to do, by all means, have at it. But I'm just not coming. <laughs> But yeah, if like, if you are no to certain things, you got to be a no to certain yeah, things. And, and you have to be good with that within yourself, regardless of what the other person wants. So what I think happens with a lot of women is that they are, when they're trying to get the guy, mm -hmm. they're a lot more agreeable to certain mm -hmm. things. And then they are in a committed relationship and then th they flip the script and the, like and the guy's switch? like, yeah, bait your switch. Saying? Exactly. And like things that used to be okay are no longer okay. And the guy's kind of like, Wait, what? This was okay. Really? You mm -hmm. think that happens? Oh, that happens all the time. Really? Yeah, it's like a, give me a scenario. It's a manipulating t a mani manipulation tactic. Of course, but give me a scenario. Uh probably like if a guy has a female friend. Mhm. Mm so this this actually just happened. Okay. So he's always had this female friend and when uh My friends like me and Charles. No, they're just no, they were friends. Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay. So they were friends when my friend first started dating this guy. She was okay with, you know, having this girlfriend. But then nine months down the line, she was like, oh, my God. She was just constantly jealous of mm -hmm. this woman, right? So, and it was like all of a sudden, like, it's either her or me. You have to pick blah, blah, blah. You saw from day one that there is going to be a competitive energy for this man's attention. Yeah. Don't blame him. Nine months later... Yeah, you thought you were going to win. Like, what did you think you were going to win? What competition were you getting into? Like, if a guy tells me, like, oh, I have I have my female best friend, and, and like, we've been best friends for a decade. And I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, I don't want any part of I it. Don't, I don't want to be a part of it. Yeah. Because I know myself well enough. That it's going to irk you. To know that I will never be able to let that go. Do you think this brings up such a great thing? Do you think that there is any such thing as female, male friendships? I have a male friend in my life who is much older than me, 20-something mm -hmm. years older than me, and 
we did have a good friendship for almost a decade. Mm -hmm. And now he and had he realized he wanted to be your sugar daddy. No, he oh. didn't want to be my sugar daddy. Okay. Uh, and now he has a new woman in his life. And I, I met her when we were friends and we're no longer friends. There's just distance there now. Right. Yeah. So, so what do you think that means? It means that if he continued being single, we would still be friends, but because she's not okay with my presence in his life, we're not going to be friends. Cause see, I, I come at that totally differently. He always had a thing for you. But now that thing's been filled by another woman and you're not needed. That's what I think it is. So it could be that. Yeah. And it doesn't, but they're not mutually exclusive, right? Mm -hmm. We could have had a friendship. So she had, a, you think she has a problem. I, I think, think problem. men aren't ever really truly friends with women. There's like at least some part of them that if they have a, a close friendship with you, they do you. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this one for a vote. Okay. Let's do a vote on that. Can men and women be friends? Vote for yes. Friends without any, without any, wait a minute. Let's rephrase this. Oh, Can she's going to get particular. Yes, very particular. Can men be friends with women? What is that word when you have no sexual platonic. platonic friends with women only? Can men do it? Without ever having a thought of wanting to fuck her. Look, his hand went back down. <laughs> Not ever having a like, thought. Yeah, that's platonic. You never thought about fucking the bitch. <laughs> I like how aggressive you get sometimes. Like, so you never dude. thought of fucking the bitch. Yeah. Did you? Or did, did you not? Did you or not? It's okay. It's okay if you did. <laughs> but then... You well, I think they that. may have had thoughts. And then, then you're not just friends. But it doesn't mean that they're, like, going around being like, oh, I want to fuck her. <laughs> no. Every day. But when they're whacking off, sometimes she, she runs through his head. Okay, oh, that would be nice to feel. <laughs> You're not just friends. We're moving think, on from this topic. I think girls can do it. I think girls can have. No, I, 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 I negate your <laughs> your eggplant. Put your eggplant. You want a sword fight? That is that on his list <laughs> under acid. <acids? laughs> I am so sorry. I'm stopping now. <laughs> or an Eiffel Tower. We like Eiffel Towers. What is that? Ooh. Ooh. She doesn't know what an Eiffel... Do you want me, Do you want him to bring up a picture for you? No. <laughs> I do not want Pornhub screenshots. Do you know what came up for me when I was when I was researching some of these things? My Google search is forever skewed by weird things now. Are you going to Google an Eiffel Tower later? I, I'm going to ask you to describe it to okay. me now. Really? Yes. <gasps> Come on. Use your imagination. No, I don't want to use my imagination. Describe it to me. Two men, one woman. On oh. all fours. Oh. Good. You got it. Oh. Mm -hmm. Better write that one you down. You love Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your trip. <laughs> Every time you look at the Eiffel Tower now. <laughs> Damn, Alicia. <laughs> I'll be bet thinking. you could find some French dudes to help you build that there. If that's a dream. A little bit of French. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. Oh. That's one I've never done. <laughs> I love good, like, vacation sex. I think I, it's the best. I really, really, oh, not resent, but a little bit regret. I've never done that. Like, just gone to another country and been like, damn, he's hot. <laughs> You can live vicariously through my pussy on this year. Okay, thank you. Can you turn it into a book, like a 74 page one? Just like I, can, I can't. Would you like? I'll be like, excuse me, sir. I really need to document this <laughs> Eiffel Tower. Alicia, it's good. <laughs> and Paris is good. <laughs> I love, I love Paris. <laughs> Afghanistan? Nah, not so much. <laughs> I don't know. Never been, but <laughs> I'm willing to go. <laughs> okay, is that another thing? Uh, what? Afghanistan? No, it's not a thing. <laughs> How do you make Afghanistan? I was like. <laughs> I'm more so confused than like. I'm so sorry. That shit was hilarious. You're fine. Okay. So, yeah, I'm. I. This is. <laughs> Wait, how could we make a female Eiffel Tower? How could we be on top? Can you do it? Strap on. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're in the game, ladies and gentlemen. That took a so minute. some French ladies want to purr, holla. <laughs> I was going to use it on a dude, but... <laughs> I did not discriminate. I'm fine either way. <laughs> either way is also All good. good. <laughs> All good, as long as it's safe. Keep your eggplant to yourself. <laughs> yeah, I'm really... I'm just really excited for this European vacation. I... So... Now, you already know that you do flavors. You wouldn't tell me how often you change your flavors out, but on vacation, what's the rotation? Oh, it depends on the chemistry. Depends on the, depends on the. So if the chemistry is good, you'll rotate less often. I mean, we're talking about batching here. Let's be efficient. Are are we talking about about rotating genders or are we talking about rotating Eiffel towers? Either way. What are we rotating? (laughs) Men, mostly. That's what. Oh, men. Okay. I was like, are we rotating gender? I'm like, "Mm, I can rotate genders. On vacation? I mean, I. I've gotten down on some vacations. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> there was that one trip to Mexico where I was like, I've gone too far. You've gone too Well, what was too far? Oh, just, Come on. Too far. <laughs> Look, I already embarrassed myself in front of my poor children. You can tell me what too far is. Oh, we're no, you have not embarrassed yourself enough. Oh. Oh. There's going to be more opportunities for you to laugh like this. Dude, I just want to know what too far is for you. I think it was like less than a five day vacation and I was in double digits by the end of it. Damn. Yeah, I was. You, get- have, you have a thing for dark hair. No, I was just getting after it. It was spring break. I had actually. <laughs> Time to let the winter go. What happened was I had j- just done my most successful launch ever in my business. Oh, you were feeling like a bad bitch. I was feeling like a bad bitch, but I was also feeling like a real exhausted oh, bitch. You needed some vitamin so D. So I needed some vitamin D and I needed to... You know, you can also get that from, I think, laying out in the sun. Uh, it's not no, the same. Not the, no. no, I tried it in Mexico. I think oh. it was day one when I was like, I'm half of a Mai Tai down. I need to fuck. <laughs> like... Yeah, it was those Mai Tais. It's Mai Tais. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, I was really st- I was really stressed and I was really like, I just needed to let go. I just needed to release. Yeah. I just needed somebody to hold me. I just needed somebody to take control. I just needed somebody Have to you ever cried throw me around. Sex? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, because you felt a huge release. Like, yeah. I'm not talking about your big orgasm that you had. I'm talking, <laughs> I'm yeah. talking about like an emotional release. Yeah, yeah for sure. Mm. For sure. Cool. My, when I first started learning about tantric sex, practicing tantric sex, that's when it really became less of a human act of sex and more of a spiritual connected experience because it felt like bodies mended as one Mm. and all of their reality has dropped off. And I didn't even really know if I was human and like, it just felt like I didn't have any physical limits to myself. And it was like, I was the same with the other partner yeah i can i i know what you're talking about or at least i think i know what you're talking about i yeah. have you, where you don't really understand where your body ends and theirs begins exactly and it just feels like love mm-hmm. and the only time i had felt that before was when i did a vipassana silent retreat and like on day eight or nine i just went so much into breath work that it felt like my body evaporated and i just turned into everything and nothing at the same time wow so I was like, oh, I've had this feeling before. I know what this experience is. So that was the only other time that um, I cried Mm -hmm. in awe of what this connection could be. Mm -hmm. And that was a very much a resurrection of sexual power for me where I realized that sex is a lot more than a release. Sex Mm -hmm. is a lot more than a physical um, act. And that partnership really brought me to a new level of understanding of something beyond myself when two people meet. And I actually became a lot more um, picky and choosy about the energy that I let into my body. Mm -hmm. I think that's wise. So, and um, you know, are you saying no more Mexico trips? Oh, I'm probably, you know, it's going to have, you just told me you were going to have some serious fun in Europe. Yeah. So you're just going to be careful with who you have serious fun with. I just don't know if it's going to be a double digit five day vacation. (laughs) You're gone for a month. (laughs) But that was like, that was also self-destructive. Was it? In a sense, that was self-destructive. In a sense, it was releasing. Is it self-destructive? Because I was releasing energy and trying to let go of control by like through sex. Oh, okay. You were using that as your medium to... I was relax. using that to relax. I was using that to let go. I was using that to like self-regulate. Like I didn't know how to self-soothe. So I would look for a guy to have this like crazy sex with. And then I'd be like, all right, 
Mm -hmm. And then in order for me to get that type of reckless oh, the get off the feeling. Yeah. I was chasing the feeling of I got you. Mm -hmm. Now you're in my bed. Now you're doing this. Now you're doing what I tell you to do. Mm -hmm. And there was this moment of like orgasm, right? And then it would just be done. Done. And then if I saw that person again, would it really be as reckless, right? Mm -hmm. So it would I that was that vacation. And when I came home, I was like, that's when I hired a therapist. I was mm -hmm. like, I'm, we're going to need to, I need to unpack some things. We need to unpack some things. <laughs> Mostly that vitamin D that was more like a vitamin D it was, minus. Yeah. Well, it was good stuff. I mean, it was, it was great. <gasps> hmm. Very intriguing. Yeah. I definitely think I missed out on some things, you know, just for understanding purposes. Like I've never done that. So I think it would be a lot of fun. You know, it could be. But you've had in your life where you've had um, multiple partners at the same time, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, Charles and I, we were dating other people while we were doing whatever we did. So it's just that I think was one of the most freeing things about him. He was willing to let me be me and he didn't have to control me. He didn't need to own me. We didn't have to, um, you know, go this traditional route. So traditional route. What's traditional these days? What's a traditional route oh, anymore? God, I don't, I don't think it's the same thing as it was, you know, 15 years ago for me, traditional. I, I, to me, that was, you know, you meet someone when you're in high school and you're going to be high school sweethearts and then you get married, you buy a house, you have kids. That was the tradition that I was raised thinking was normal. But now I'm really excited to see the changes in what is perceived as normal. Like women don't have to have kids. You're worth just as much with or without. Like, wow, I love it. And men don't have to have sex with only women. Yeah, men can do whatever they want. We all can. It just feels like we're in a very liberated time. I know it's not perfect. I know that there are still people that have their opinions and think that they should be able to control others. I get it. But I do think that we have come a long way as far as freedom goes and accepting others for who they wish to be, whatever that be, you know. Uh, I'm excited about the the times. I think this is the first time in history where we have as women specifically as many rights mm -hmm. and we can exercise our rights and we can work and we can not work and we have, we can have kids. We don't, we don't have to have kids. I mean, it's not perfect. Again, we have Rowan Wade, which is a huge, it's a whole other topic. It's a whole another topic. It's a whole another story. Uh, but for the most part, we have choices, mm -hmm. more choices than ever. And yeah. I find that we need to celebrate that and be really excited for that. Basically, it's Burger King. Have it your way. Have it all your way, but don't get crazy. <laughs> Just don't get in my way. <laughs> have it all your way, but don't get in my yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Keep it in your, your way. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So did we, we didn't even get through your whole list. We didn't. No. Do we keep this, going? I know. Do we have, or is this an episode have a part two? two or is everybody's poor ears and minds like, oh my God, these girls, I can't listen to them again. 